think the ayes have it. The member for Indi. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I seek leave to move the following motion, that so much of standing orders be suspended as would prevent the private member's business order of the day relating to the Australian Federal Integrity Commission Bill 2021, standing in the name of the member for Indi, being called on immediately and passage of the bill through all stages, taking priority over all other business during business of government business until its completion. B, a maximum of two hours being allocated for the second reading stage, with a maximum of 10 minutes per member speaking. C. If consideration of the bill has not been completed by 1 p.m., any questions necessary to complete the House's consideration of the bill being put to the House immediately and without debate. Yeah, yeah. Is leave granted? The Assistant Minister. Despite the member's charm, leave is not granted. Leave is not granted. The member for Indi. I move that so much of standing orders be suspended as would prevent the private member's business order of the day relating to the Australian Federal Integrity Commission Bill 2021, standing in the name of the member for Indi, being called on immediately, and passage of the bill through all stages taking priority over all other business during periods of government business until its completion. B. A maximum of two hours being allocated for the second reading stage, with a maximum of 10 minutes per member speaking. C. If consideration of the bill has not been completed by 1 p.m., any questions necessary to complete the House's consideration of the bill being put to the House immediately and without debate. Mr. Speaker, we have waited too long for an integrity commission. I have watched scandal after scandal going uninvestigated with no independent watchdog on the beat. Each day that we delay is another day of deterioration of trust in this place and among the Australian people. Each day it becomes harder to claw back that trust. There are only four sitting days left this year. We may not be back again. This might be our very last chance. If someone, Mr Speaker, is serious about an integrity commission, they would write a bill to set it up. They would table it. They would bring it on for debate. That's what I have done. The government has acted very differently. An endless merry-go-round of consultations, shutting down debate in the House, shutting down debate in the Senate. It's clear the government is ignoring the will of the people, and now it's obstructing the will of the parliament. It's broken the promise it made almost three long years ago. We are entitled to ask whether the Prime Minister honestly, in his heart, actually wants a robust Federal Integrity Commission. For almost two years now, I've worked with members of the House and Senate to shape my Integrity Commission bill. I've also had very constructive discussions with countless other members in both houses. As an independent, my office door has been an open door. My bill is a true work of collaboration. It's a consensus approach with public hearings when in the public interest. It's retrospective and it allows for public referrals. Importantly, so importantly, it also protects against vexatious claims and allows for true exoneration. This bill is gold standard. But these are not my words. They are the words of the finest legal minds in the nation, from former justices of the High Court to leading academics, jurists, ethicists. They all support the passage of this bill right now. This is a bill of the people from the people to hold all of us to account, to help us to be our best selves. This is the integrity commission that our country deserves. I call on all members of parliament, wherever you sit, who believe this government has got its priorities wrong, to support this motion today. I beseech you, do not remain silent. This is not about political point scoring. This is not about partisan politics. This is about each and every one of us staying true to the people we represent. This is about each and every one of us doing the right thing 
on all sides of this House. I thank the member for Indi. Is the motion seconded? The member for Bass. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I second the motion. I don't take this decision lightly at all. Um, I take this decision very seriously to stand here today, um, and it's a difficult decision to make. This is one of the most important things that we come to this place to do. I think we should suspend the standing orders and have this debate. The time has gone on long enough. Everyone in this House, I, I, I think without exception, thinks that we need a robust Federal Integrity Commission, that people should have trust and confidence in us, in the people that they elect, the people they send here. That's evidenced by the fact that there has been several bills presented to the House. All sides, the Greens, Labor, Liberal and the Independents have all said, you know, we've got a, we've got a bill. But the problem is that the politics has wrapped it up so tight that we're not progressing um, that bill. There's no, there's no debate about um, the fact that we need one, but we're not having the debate on what it should look like. And we shouldn't be afraid to have the debate on what it looks like. There is a place for politics. There's a place for the partisan point scoring. But on something as important as trust and confidence in elected officials, that's not it. And we will never advance this if we can't find a way to come together to collaborate on this. A good starting point for that is the member for Indi's bill. She's put a lot of work into it. She has consulted widely. She has collaborated. Is it perfect? Maybe not. Why don't we talk about it? Why don't we all come here in good faith and have those conversations and find something that we can take forward in the best interests of all Australians. It's why we're here. It's why we come here. It's the most important thing we do. Thank you. I thank the member for that. The question is that the motion be disagreed to. The member for Warringa. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I support everything that has been said by the uh, in this place in relation to the urgency to suspend standing orders and allow debate on this very important legislation. The debate on this bill is urgent, and I commend uh, everyone who is here to actually support this. It has been 1,077 days since the Prime Minister promised to introduce a Commonwealth Integrity Commission, and yet we are still yet to see a bill tabled in the House other than the one that has been tabled by the member for Indi. There has been also tabled and passed through the Senate a, a, bill, a similar bill um, by the Greens. As Senator Lambie pointed out in the other place, a child born on the day the promise was made would have since learned to crawl, walk and talk. All the government has done on this issue is talk. We simply need to get on to the next stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call on the government to support this bill presented by the member for Indi, which I was very proud to second in this place last month. This is an issue that is raised with me continually by constituents of all political persuasion. They are united in wanting to have trust and faith in politics, in government. They want to know that there are those, uh, that there is a commission and a mechanism to ensure there are proper processes and the issues are properly investigated. This bill has been awarded top marks by an independent review by the Centre for Public Integrity. In contrast, the draft model from the government has, has had issues. It has been broadly consulted on and it has been criticised on issues. And so rather than just stifle debate, stop this, why not? come forward, debate the bill from the member for Indi, move amendments, have the discussion, have a collaborative approach to an issue that will raise all of us. We will all be the better for it in our communities with constituents if they can have trust and faith in the process of government. If the Attorney-General won't back her own bill to bring it in after over a thousand days, then I think it is time that the member for Indi's bill be, de de be debated. An integrity commission with teeth, teeth will be able to investigate and put to bed so many of the issues that we've seen raised during this parliament. 
and it really is important that that be done. Many of the arguments that are raised are about specific, for example, some of the integrity commissions at state level. But that is misleading in terms of what this bill is. The bill from the member for Indi is the best of all the models. It is not a replica of one state's model versus another's. It is a, it is a collective of the best elements of all those models of integrity commission. And that's why it is important that we debate it. If the government has issues with the element of that bill, then move amendments, have the debate, discuss it. But nothing cannot be the answer. We can't have the situation where we wait indefinitely and that there is just nothing happening. Because otherwise, we have allegations that sit out there and we just never get them resolved, whether they need to proceed to proper investigations or not. It is important that a Federal Integrity Commission be transparent. It is important that integrity and investigation be seen to be done by the public. It must be seen to be thorough. It, that is so important for the public to be able to have trust that government uh, and processes are being held to account. Because we are in this place spending the public's money. We pass laws. We are taking decisions that will impact the lives of millions of people. We have a duty to ensure those decisions are for the greater good, are for the good of our communities. And in that sense, they must be able to be confident that those decisions are held to the highest standards, that there is a rigorous integrity and anti-corruption process to catch any concerns. So I commend to the government to support this suspension of standing orders. We have had time throughout these last two years and the pandemic disruptions to debate a number of bills that couldn't on any definition have been described as urgent. There ha when there has been a will, there has been a way to introduce legislation to deal with the, I would argue, some issues that have never even been on the radar. But this issue, the biggest issue, the Australian people's trust in the Australian government's decisions is one that has been left hanging. I think that has to stop, and we should debate it today. I thank the member for Warringah and call the member for Watson or oh, sorry, Rebecca. or Mayo. Oh, uh, the member for. <laughs> sorry, uh, thanks, thanks, Deputy Speaker. Uh, just to make sure that it's on the record, the uh, the opposition will be supporting this motion. The bill uh, that has been introduced is something that would be subject to parliamentary debate. It would be subject to inquiry, and no doubt there would be amendments that would, that would come through in its final form. Uh, but a thousand days is too long, and the time to commence that debate, the best time would have been years ago. The next yeah. best time is now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I thank the member for Watson. The question is the motion be disagreed to, and I call the member for Mayo. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker. I, uh, I commend the great work of the member for Indi and support this motion. I was here in the last parliament when the government said that they would introduce an integrity commission. It hasn't happened yet, and the Australian people have grown tired. They've grown frustrated at us. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the member for Bass for her courage of her conviction, she is on the right side of history with this. Mm -hmm. We need to have a Federal Integrity Commission. Trust in all of us is waning in the Australian community. We need to do better. This was an election promise. This is potentially the last week. We have one more week to go, the last sitting weeks before perhaps an election. Who knows? That is at the discretion of the Prime Minister, although many in the media say that this is our last sitting period. We are failing the Australian people and we are failing ourselves if we do not even allow debate on a very good bill that sits before this parliament. What is the government so afraid of? What are you afraid of debating? It's actually come to the point where it's nonsensical. I would urge government members, if you too have the courage of the member for Bass, and many of you have said quietly and privately to many of us on the crossbench that you do, why don't you put 
your action, where your words are. And when this goes to a vote, come and sit on the right side of history. I thank the member for May I call them the member for Melbourne? Oh. We can have an ICAC report for We can have an ICAC report The Greens support this motion because it would deliver an ICAC before Christmas. And after three long years of waiting, people want one. And previous members have made some very good points. There are alternative models. There is a bill that has passed the Senate pushed by the Greens that is awaiting debate here. I think the opposition has a model. Others have alternative models. We should at least have the debate. We've got time to have the debate. And if the member for Indi's motion is supported, we could have a federal ICAC for Christmas. And that would be a terrific way to end this parliamentary year. I thank the member. The question before the chair uh, is that the Motion be agreed to. The minister seeks a call. The minister. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to yield uh, to uh, the member for Kennedy. I give the call to the member for Kennedy. I um, have been through the fiery furnace of the inquiry in Queensland, uh, the notorious Fitzgerald inquiry, and uh, I was one of the two people that called it on, and uh, we weren't aware to the extent of the corruption of the police force in Queensland, but uh, we <clears throat> knew there were a number of murders. It turned out there were 42 murders. Now, if we'd had an ICAC or a Criminal Justice uh, Commission, as it was later called in Queensland, uh, it would never have got to that stage. Uh, 21 of those deaths were the uh, infamous whiskey a go-go. Uh, where um, the uh, mobsters cabaret uh, um, protection racket. They hadn't paid their protection money and uh, up went the uh, whiskey a go-go with no inquiry or punishment of anyone. Uh, but the door was closed from the outside and 21 people were burnt to death. But quite apart from that, there was another 21 murders, six of them in North Queensland. So, if you don't have something like this, then you leave members of parliament, and uh, as, as one of those members of parliament, in very, very scary territory. Very, very scary territory. You leave decent policemen in very scary territory. I, I would estimate that over 20 police were completely destroyed their lives by evil police putting. Um, um, uh, obscene pornographic uh, child pornography on their computers. To this very day, I've been so scarred and scared, I still will not use a computer um, because I saw what happened to all these innocent people during that inquiry. Judge Vasta, whose son is in this place and his other son is a federal court judge, um, was hung, drawn and quartered without a single scintilla of evidence ever been produced against him. But because he was from the wrong side of the tracks, and I'm quoting from a speech by Lynn Powell, who was touted as future Premier in Queensland, um, the sins of Vasta was that he wasn't a member of the legal club in Brisbane. He hadn't gone to the GPS TAS schools. He was a cane cutter's son from North Queensland. Um, those were the sins. And the people that they put to judge him were the were the, were the, were the, uh, the, the uh, judges in Brisbane. They were the very people that, that uh, were resenting him being there. So I, I give you two or three examples of the terrible downside of a proposal of this type. But the alternative to that is to watch what happened in Queensland, where anyone that tried to assail them, uh, they assailed you long before you got close to them. And that's where an independent body such as proposed by the honourable member, who, like myself, represents a regional area in this place, that's why I'm backing her rather courageous and uh, wonderful initiative today. But I ask everyone please to be conscious of the downside to these sort of inquiries. <clears throat> the question is that the motion be disagreed to. The minister is seeking the call now. I am, uh, Madam the Deputy minister. Speaker. 
Um, so uh, I do thank uh, the member for moving this motion, but I want to uh, speak to uh, why uh, the government will not be supporting a suspension of standing orders. And the issue does not go to the, uh, the merits of or the need for uh, a serious and well-considered body to deal with the problem, uh, the risk of serious uh, criminal corruption at the Commonwealth level. Because I want to be very clear, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, that uh, the government has developed uh, such a model, the Commonwealth Integrity Commission, which is intended to be the lead body in Australia's successful multi-agency anti-corruption framework. And we've gone through a very detailed consultation process, 333 written submissions received, 46 consultations, meetings and round tables, uh, and we stand ready to introduce that legislation, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. We've done the detailed work. We've committed uh, 100 and almost $150 million of funding for the Commonwealth Integrity Commission. Uh, we project that we'll have around 172 staff. Uh, and of course, we've already implemented uh, phase one uh, of our plans by expanding the jurisdiction of the Australian Commission for Law Enforcement Integrity. And I do want to make a couple of things clear, Madam Deputy Speaker, because there have been uh, some misleading claims made about um, the government's proposal. Uh, on the model that we are proposing, the Commonwealth Integrity Commission will be able to investigate past conduct and matters that occurred prior to its commencement. The Integrity Commission will be able to look into past conduct that falls within the scope of its jurisdiction. Uh, this will include over 145 criminal offences that presently exist in legislation, uh, including, for example, under the Criminal Code Act, under the Foreign Influence Transparency Scheme Act, the Public Interest Disclosure Act. And of course, the government uh, will also, under our proposal, create new offences relating to corrupt conduct, including concealing corruption and repeated public sector corruption. Uh, so um, this, and I want to make this point very clear as well, because there's been some misleading claims. The model I that we are interrupt proposing the minister will for a have... moment. The member seeks to make a point of order. Deputy Speaker, a point of order. The, the minister is misleading the house and misleading the Australian the... community by what he is describing. The member, the member it is going to be a fast, Deputy Speaker. This so-called integrity can't commission. The member can debate the point of order. I thank the member for his point of order, but it can be dealt with in other ways. So I give the call to the minister. Uh, well, um, what I'm seeking to do, Madam Deputy Speaker, is to inform the House of the details of the model uh, that the Morrison government has developed and consulted on extensively, because there have been some misleading claims uh, made by a number of parties. The facts are that the model that we have developed for the Commonwealth Integrity Commission sees I that body the having minister. the same. The minister will resume his seat for a moment. The minister, the member that seeks to take a point of order. I give yes, the call to Madam the member. Deputy Speaker. On relevance, this motion is about debate. This is not. It's about suspending standing orders to bring on debate. It is not about the government's bill. I thank the member. Uh, if we'll all just take a breath. I haven't given the call to the minister yet. I thank the member and the minister should address the substance of the motion. I give the call to the minister. Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm doing precisely that. I'm explaining why there is not a need in the government's view for a suspension of standing orders so as to allow debate uh, in relation to the member's bill because the government has a detailed proposal in relation to a Commonwealth Integrity Commission. Uh, there have been some misleading claims made about uh, that, uh, the government's model. So what I'm seeking to do is to make sure the House— I ask the minister to resume his seat for a moment. I give the call to the member for Kennedy. I have great respect for the minister, great respect for the minister. But the issue that is being debated— I'm sorry, the member Madam for Kennedy, Speaker, can you just indicate to the chair what I, the point of order is? I am going to do that, please. Yes, Please. but I need you to indicate right. first. The up issue here. being debated is whether it's an emergency, whether we have the right to an emergency motion. I it's think, not whether I, his idea is better than our I idea. I thank the member it for Kennedy. It is whether it should be 
an emergency motion. I thank the member for Kennedy. The, the point of order. It's not the issue. The, the issue member for is Kennedy has emergency. made his point. The well, point of order is that the minister needs to address the substance of the motion. I have made it clear to the minister that he needs to address the substance of the motion before us. The minister. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And uh, can I respond to the point that the member for Kennedy has made? Because he's absolutely right. The question before the House right now is whether standing orders should be suspended so that this matter uh, can, can be dealt with. I interrupt with. the minister as his time has concluded in the debate. And I indicate to the House that the time for the debate concludes uh, very briefly. So if there's anybody who wants 30 seconds, otherwise I intend to put the question. I thank the House. So the question before the chair is that the motion be disagreed to. All those in agreement say aye. Against no. no. Declare the motion carried. No's have it. The noes have it. A division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
lock the doors. Order. The question is that the motion be disagreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair and the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Nichols and Gray as tellers for the ayes and the honourable members for Werriwa and Lawler as tellers for the noes.
Order. The result of the division is ayes 63, noes 66. The question is therefore resolved in the negative. The next question is now that the motion be agreed to. All those of that opinion. So there needs, there needs to be another motion. The motion that I put, I'm confident, is correct, and the motion is that uh, the question, sorry, is that the motion be agreed to. Um, all those of that opinion say aye. Under the, me, me, me Under the standing orders, um, like there's a standing order asking you to be able to state what that question is, and I just, for clarification for members, because it's a significant moment if you could state what the question is that you're putting to the House. The, uh, the, the question is that the, um, sorry, one moment. The question is that the motion moved by the member for Indi to suspend standing orders uh, be agreed to. Be so there, there needs to be an absolute majority on this question. So that's that's the question. That's the question. All of those that opinion say aye. The member for Menzies on a point of order. Uh, Mr Speaker, I submit to you that the question we've just voted on is the question which was before the House. It didn't have an absolute majority and therefore it fails.
manager of opposition business. Um, I, I just similarly submit that the point of order that's just been raised by the member for Menzies needed to be raised before you declared it for the nose. You, you have in fact declared this motion as, as the nose having ha, position having been carried. That declaration has been made from the chair. The Leader of the House. On, on indulgence, uh, Mr Speaker. I, I, uh, the order. On indulgence, Mr Speaker. Uh, the vote required an absolute majority, which was not achieved. Uh, and the normal practice, uh, as I understand it in this House, is for uh, you to declare the vote as you have, but to note at that point that given an absolute majority had not been achieved, uh, therefore the motion moved by the honourable member does not carry. The Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, thanks, Mr Speaker. The points that have just been raised uh, by the Leader of the House would have to have been raised before the declaration had been made as to what the, what the outcome was. What the, Leader of the House has referred now, what the Leader of the House has referred to is a process where the count is announced and a statement is then made, but what the Speaker has done is declared the outcome. And so, therefore, if the Leader of the House wants to dissent from that decision, that's an option before the House. The Leader of the House. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, that, that I mean, is a, uh, an incorrect interpretation. I'll put it politely. Uh, I'm sure it's at least some shred of uh, genuineness to it. But the reality, Mr Speaker, is that it is within your prerogative uh, to and I know that there's advice from the clerk, but I put it to you that it's within your prerogative under the standing orders uh, to clarify the situation uh, and to, uh, in my respectful suggestion to you, uh, adhere to that practice, which would see uh, a statement along the lines that uh, I outlined earlier. The Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, Mr Speaker, if you, if you would want to go down that path, then there would have to be a seeking of a recommitting of the question. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. If, if it is sought to recommit the question, then what the Leader of the House has, has proposed would be able to be done, if, the, if there's a request that it be recommitted. Um, but, but short of that, it's been declared.
order. The position in relation to the first motion stands, uh, and that was the, uh, the, the numbers that I read out earlier. Uh, there needs to be a, an absolute majority. Um, and the next question is that the motion be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. Which motion? On the suspension of standing orders. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Oh, I th that's good enough. That's good enough. Member for Kennedy has clearly a lot of us are very confused. I'm one of the dumber ones, so you're, I'm really at a, at a Is loss. Is there a point of order? No point of order. Uh, Member for Indi has the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm not confused. What clearly has to happen is that we need to get on with the debate. We're spending so much time right now Member for Indi trying will to understand her seat. the procedures. Member for Indi will resume her seat. The member for Indi will resume her seat. Order. The question is that the motion moved by the member for Indi be agreed to. All those that opinion say aye. aye. And this will the, uh, aye. The, uh, those against no. no. Is a division required? It, I think the I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Is a division required? Ring the bells for four minutes.
Order. Lock the doors. The I appoint the honourable members for Nichols and Gray as tellers for the eyes, and the honourable members for Werriwa and Lawler as tellers for the nose. Order. The result of the division is eyes 66, nose 64. The question is not carried by an absolute majority of members as required by Standing Order 47. The clerk.